Hi, I'm Barbara Bertuzzi, and I'm a wellness consultant from St. Pete Beach, Florida. And hope to me in 2021, oh my goodness, having optimum potential as entrepreneurs. <laughs> That's one of the things that I think that if we could all collaborate, work together, and figure out how to be our optimum self and how to contribute to others in that 360 realm would just be amazing. And one of the things that I got from Coach Minx uh, is to color code my calendar and to look to see over a week span, how balanced am I? Let's bring balance into 2021. Let's look at having joy, creation, creativity, exploration, connecting with elders and youth and just being the optimum self that you can be. And I invite you to do that right here, right now. Look at getting your calendar color-coded. Um, I use exercises red, appointments um, for health and such are yellow, but my work is green. My relationships are royal uh, blue, but my relationship is turquoise. So if it's just us, it's turquoise, but if it's us going out with other couples and such, then that's royal blue. So you get to see where you're in balance and where you're out of balance. I know when I first started looking, I dropped exercise off totally. So, but the hope that I give is that we get to see that the better that you can contribute to others, the more that you shine and you grow and you blossom. And so where can you look to see to contribute to others. That's what I, my invitation is for you for the year 2021. And God bless you through this journey that we call life. And thank you so much for this opportunity to contribute. I'm Barbara Bertuzzi from St. Pete Beach, Florida. Bye for now. Mm -hmm. Days and crazy days, cool drink of summer, ten toes buried in the sand, sipping on coconuts with paper umbrellas, no place to be, no special plans, yeah that's the life in my dreams, paradise, you and me. I'm chasing the blue skies, I'm headed for love, packing nothing but good times, come on along, I watch our kids go up in smoke as we kick back, yeah, take it slow, there's nothing I'd rather do, than spend my life chilling. Streets and concrete, jackhammer jumping, car horns blowing in the breeze. Traffic jams and tail lights, people racing and running, skyscrapers pressing past the trees. I close my eyes and sail away, you and I, to a perfect day. In the blue skies, I'm headed for love, packing nothing but good times. Come on along, I watch the kids go up in smoke as we kick back here. Yeah, take it slow, nothing I'd rather do than spend my life chilling. Watch it.
cares go up in smoke as we kick back in take it slow nothing i'd rather do than spend this life chilling with you no place that i'd rather be than right here right now chilling Chilling with my baby. Come on. Come on. Come on, darling. Come on. Chilling with my baby. Just chilling. Hey folks, Kevin Newsom here from Tampa, Florida, coming to you from the middle of the Chattahoochee National Forest along the Appalachian Trail, somewhere in northern Georgia. Um, when Dennis contacted me, he wanted me to participate in this Hope Fest. I thought he said Hope Fest, and I said, wait a minute, I might not be your demographic. I mean, I'm an I'm old guy, you know, I'm, I'm, as, I'm older than the Ten Commandments, you know, the, the movie, not the actual tablet thing. Anyway, he said, no, 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 the Hope Fest. I want you to tell everybody what you're hopeful for for 2021. I said, oh, well, that's easy. And he said, no, no, you can't say world peace. No, no, that's way too easy. I said, why can't I say world peace? World peace is something that is universally desired and impossibly difficult to obtain. I don't understand how something that's unanimous can't get a consent one way or the other. Okay, fine. World peace is off the table. Next best thing, the first step to world peace. Okay, that's what I hope for 2021. And that first step is get away from your keyboard. Walk away from that monitor. Pick up your coffee in the morning and get away from the coffee table. Put on your slippers and bathrobe and go for a saunter around the block. Trust me, that 20 minutes of therapy is worth far more than the angry, cesspool of social media that's out there fighting each other if you would only see who's on the other side of that monitor you realize that there's somebody sitting in their basement in their underwear with orange stains on their fingers and an empty bag of cheesy poofs on the floor that's who you're arguing with get away from it when it comes down to uh five o'clock do it again take that glass of wine walk around the block take a hike maybe next year at this time you could hike the Appalachian Trail. You just never know. The therapy out here is far better than anything you can find in social media, which by the way is neither social nor media. So trust me on this. You wanna get up, take a hike. First step to world peace is the one out your front door and away from that keyboard. Good luck, Kevin Newsom, coming to you from the Chattahoochee National Forest. Like most of us in America, um, I grew up with a heavy dose of advertising, uh, not sold in stores, um, same great product, bright new package, and all those kinds of things. But one of my favorites, and I think it had to do with real estate, was this is the opportunity of a lifetime. And we're all born into a place where this is the opportunity of a lifetime, literally. And in this strange time in which we find ourselves, this, this schism, I've discovered that because I'm a visual and kinesthetic learner very strongly, is that I can think about how I'm moving. I'm always moving towards one thing and I'm always moving away from the opposite. I try to move towards empathy and away from pity, for instance, because empathy you do like this, pity you do like this. I've also been trying to move away from indifference towards love, I can't do both at the same time, right? So if I'm crossing the parking lot and I see a piece of trash and I don't pick it up and just go, that's somebody else's trash, I'm moving towards indifference, which means I'm moving away from love. If I pick it up and dispose of it, then I've moved towards love, which means I've also moved away from indifference. And I think that's, um, that's a valuable thing, at least for me. And one more example is that when I move towards curiosity, towards wondering, towards being childlike, I move away from resentment, which is a very corrosive emotion, I believe, and it's childish. So by tracking those movements towards, as well as movements away from, and I just do it gently, I'm not like, mm, about this, I think I'm doing better. And I think I'm living into that 
opportunity of a lifetime that we're all Hello, my friends. My name is Ray Stashesko. Dennis, I want to thank you for allowing me to participate in the Biz Catalyst 2021 Message for Hope. Folks, I know you're as excited as I am that 2021 is here. We're leaving behind a year that'll go in the history books as a really, really bad year for every single person alive today. It was horrific, a global pandemic, economic turmoil. But you know what? 2021 is a new year. It's a new book. It's our book, and it's full of blank pages. And it's up to us to put the title on that book, and it's up to us to put the content in that book. And if we really want to make a difference for 2021, we got to start doing things a little bit different. You know, I have a saying, and it goes like this. Judgment is when you look out a window. Learning is when you open the window. So ladies and gentlemen, in 2021, we need to open that window on new possibilities. We need to open that window and look in places we refused to look before. We need to collaborate with people who think differently. And together, through that uniqueness, we can create something better than what we left. 2020 is a bad year. It was a bad year. It'll be in the history books as a bad year. But 2021 could be our year. We need to have our hopes and we need to have our aspirations. And I know a lot of us had hope and aspirations for 2020 and that global pandemic or economic turmoil crushed, crushed those aspirations, crushed that hope. But you know what? A global pandemic, economic turmoil, that can't crush us. That can't crush our attitude, only if we let it. If we want to fill that new book for 2021 with new hope and new aspirations, all we got to do is hope for something better. Then we got to put an action plan together to achieve what we hope for. And if we're a leader of a family or if we're a leader of a business, we have to remember this. <laughs> Those that you lead, well, they're hoping for things. They're hoping they aspire to do things, but they're also hoping that you help them achieve what they hope for. Ladies and gentlemen, 2021 might be a little bit tough, but you know what? We're tough. The human race is tough. And if we collaborate together and we work together for something better, we'll create that something better. My friends, have a fantastic 2021. And remember this, status quo is in fact the killer of all that will be invented. There's an old Jewish folk tale about a king who woke up one morning to discover that his son, the prince, thought that he was a chicken. The king was beside himself. He called the great doctors, the psychologists and psychiatrists of the land. He called the clergy to try to exorcise his son's spirit. Nothing helped. Finally, in desperation, he called the town rabbi. The rabbi arrived. He saw the prince under the banquet room table, naked plucking, flapping his arms, and pecking at food on the floor. The rabbi said to the king, Your majesty, give me one week. I'll have your son acting like a prince again. Fine. The next day, the prince came down. He was under the table. He realized there was someone there with him. It was the rabbi. Naked. Flapping his arms, clucking, and pecking at food. The prince said, What are you doing? The rabbi said, What are you doing? He said, Well, I'm a chicken. I'm also a chicken. Oh, okay. We'll be chickens together. And they spent the day together on the floor, pecking at food. The next day, the rabbi was there again, but this time he was wearing clothes. The prince said, what are you doing? He said, what do you mean? Well, you're wearing clothes. So, well, you're a chicken. Okay, where does it say that a chicken can't wear clothes? Hmm, interesting point. So the prince tried putting on clothes. The next day he found the rabbi sitting in a chair at the table, eating. He said, what are you doing? He said, what do you mean? He said, well, you're a chicken. Okay, I'm a chicken. Where does it say a chicken can't sit at the table and eat? And every day the rabbi added some form of human behavior until at the end of a week, the prince was acting like a human being again. The king was ecstatic. He said, thank you so much. He turned to his son and said, my son, I was so upset when you thought you were a chicken. The prince said, I am a chicken. The king was furious. He turned to the rabbi and says, you said you would cure my son. No, I said I would get your son to act like a prince again. If he acts like a prince, what difference does it make if he thinks he's a chicken? And over the course of time, the prince became so accustomed to acting like a prince that he forgot that he thought he was a chicken. Sages 
tell us that who is wise? One who learns from every person. This is the way children learn, but it applies to adults just as much. We have to surround ourselves with people of quality, people who have integrity and empathy and courage and self-discipline because that affects us, that transforms us into people of quality. And at the same time, we have to remember that others are learning from us. And that means we are ob obligated to conduct ourselves with dignity and integrity and empathy and self-discipline and courage. That's how we contribute to creating a better world. There is so much acrimony and divisiveness in the world today, and it all comes from ideology and philosophy and politics. But all those ideas, they don't have to tear us apart. If we conduct ourselves with self-respect and we extend that respect to others, those differences in thinking can actually become a source of strength that create a more vibrant and enlightened society. I'd like to leave you with one final thought. It's an old story, a sort of an aphorism. It's been attributed, attributed to many different sources. Don't know where it comes from. But it's an older person reflecting on his life and he says, when I was very young, I wanted to change the world. I realized I wasn't going to change the world, so I thought I'll change my country. As I got older, I saw I wasn't going to change my country, so I so I'll change my community. I didn't change my community, but I thought I'll change my family. In the end, I didn't change my family, but I thought I'll try to change myself. That's the story, but I'd like to add one line to it. And by changing myself, I changed the world. I'm Jonas and Goldson, wishing you a year of blessing, inspiration, and success in becoming the best version of yourself.